Hello and welcome to your presentation on optical character recognition. This is a part of a submission of a project for the course EEL 6825 that is pattern recognition. This presentation will be given by me that is Abhimanyu Singh. So let's start by addressing the issue that what OCR is. Optical character recognition is the conversion of printed text characters to character codes, for example, SI. OCR systems are mainly used in data processing and digitization. On a simpler level to understand OCR, we can relate it to similarities with our sense of vision. For example, as our brain can comprehend the text that is written over billboards, OCR works in a similar way and tries to extract text from images or scan printed documents. This finds quite a useful use in banking and legal industries. For example, to extract tax out of banking checks and all the administrative forms that are submitted to offices and legal institutions. Thus, making it easier for us to make the data editable searchable and mineable. This helps in keeping efficient records of data and given the current age of computers, it is easier for us to keep soft copies of documents rather than large bounds of hard copies. The first researches in the field of OCR began at Hewlett Packard in early 1984. They introduced a research team and a system called Tesseract. This was quite a basic system which scanned black on text, black on white text on scanned documents. Being one of the early research systems, it was, if it, it was essential for them to keep the input steady and easy, easily scannable. This is how a working flow of an OCR system looks like. First, we have the scanner where we put in the text document or a handwritten document. The, the image is extracted after scanning and there is some initial document image analysis done on that image. We also do some pre-processing on the image which is document image enhancement. This can go back and forth until we are sure that we have done the segmentation of the text in the image correctly that is separating out bunches of text or blobs of text correctly. Then we move on to the process of the character word recognition. Once separate words or characters are identified in the image, we run systems that can recognize what a separate character or word is. Then we proceed on to contextual processing of the text. While running the test data on the system, we run this system again and we try to match it with the output of the testing data that has already been run on the system. Then we present it to an output interface which can be then fed into the OCR consumer application which can be a big database or a text file and that depends mainly on the user. The several existing approaches will now be discussed in the field of OCR. As mentioned before, we start by basing pipelining, that is the recognition of words or characters individually, and this process is called segmentation. Later, these words and recognized characters can be fed into any of the recognition models that exist. Some of the most common methods and models are discussed below here. Number one, feature extraction. The presence or absence of the image features like the height and width defines each character. So while we run the test data, the system goes back to our trained data and matches the image features like the height and the width that define each separate character and try to match it with the test data. Number two, fuzzy logics. Basically used in the absence of uncertainty and distinct answers. As the name suggests, these logics have multi-valued logic values for conventional types like truth and false. 
but it is still necessary that there should be an absence of uncertainty and distinct answers. The image below shows how feature extraction really works. There is a raw pattern vector which is put into the feature extraction system and then fed into the classifier to put in labels. Number three, template matching. This is also known as matrix matching and is similar to its name that each recognized character forms a distinct matrix pattern. This distinct matrix pattern for each character is then matched later with the testing input, thus giving us an output of the character recognized. Number four, structural analysis. This basically takes care of structural image features like the subvertical or horizontal histograms. Like we mentioned earlier, as feature extraction takes image features like height and width, structural analysis leans on subvertical or horizontal histograms for their output. Number, number five, neural networks. These networks work exactly like the human neuron system and this is like a computer implementation of a human neuron system. The image below shows a basic neural network. This is a network system where different nodes depict various stages and the multi-valued arrays are passed on to these nodes like a neuron. For an OCR neural network, the pixels are sampled and their indexes are later matched to already known indexes that we would have created while running the training data. Moving on to performance evaluations. Even in the present world where we have exceptionally accurate imaging and scanning techniques, the recognition of typewritten text is still not 100%, which is a worrisome case for us because while dealing with important documents like banking and administrative forms, it is necessary that 100% accuracy is required. Mostly, the database that is used for these testing systems is the MNIST database, which is quite similar to the Hello World program that anyone starts with while programming. Even the commercial OCR softwares that employ a large research team dedicated to this process, given the range of 81 to 98% of the accuracy. But this also largely depends on the way the accuracy is measured and reported. The below image shows character-wise and word-wise calculation of recall and precision. Here we can see an image of commercially accumulated benchmarks by corpuses like Tobacco, U Washington and some declassified results. These are for CDK2000, Fine Reader 4.0 and NeuroTalker 4.1. I personally have implemented the system in an open CV library using Python with a KNN classifier that is a K nearest neighbor classifier that has yielded the following results. I obtained a 100% accuracy which was mainly dependent on the similar size and the kinds of input digits and the input image that I have used. At the same time, the ignorance of white spaces, alphabets and special characters like decimal points led to 100% accuracy. But as we move along and take these things into consideration, the accuracy levels might drop. So why is the OCR difficult? Poor performances has been shown by the existing systems. The industries like banking, administrative, legal, etc. require exceptionally higher rates of accuracy due to the sensitivity level of the documents involved. Nobody wants to mess up their checks or their administrative forms, don't they? They need major improvements because it is not always sure that the document quality will be good. Most of the scanned documents or the original documents that the OCR system is fed with are of poor quality, thus making it difficult to convert them to a suitable output. Sometimes the scanning capabilities are not up to mark, thus introducing several other features that make it difficult for the OCR system to generate a desired output, like noise in the images. Sometimes the case is even worse and there is an absence of pre-processing of images. 
Pre-processing mainly helps in enhancement of images as we discussed in the basic system on slide 2. In some cases, segmentation is done poorly and thus leading to a poor recognition. If we are not able to separate out characters or words, then it is very very difficult for us to lead to a proper recognition system. The future improvements can be suggested for these systems and these are a few of them. Number one, adaptive thresholding for images. Number two, baselines should be made perfectly in line. As you can see in this image, the baselines have a certain angle to them, thus making it difficult for a computer system to recognize how the characters are and making the segmentation part also difficult, introducing white spaces into the image. Number three, considering font dependencies and spacing. There are many documents will contain, that will contain separate fonts and separate sizes. Thus, the system has to be adaptive of the spacing that is between the characters or the words and thus the segmentation should be done properly and the recognition done well. Number four, outline approximation and feature matching should work in parallel thus making the system more efficient. Continuous improvements in the preset dictionaries are also an important thing that should be done which will really improve the training process and thus give us better results while running the testing. The code. The code that I have used for this is comprised mainly of two programs. One is prog underscore test dot pi and prog underscore train dot pi. We start by training the data we have an image here that is the image underscore train dot png as you can see on your right. We then do some pre-processing and try to find contours in the image. This renders the input file and give us rectangular boxes over a digit and the user has to input what digit it is to mainly identify and lead to a better character recognition that we will see in later slides. Then we run a next file that is image underscore test dot png that is our testing file and we run a similar code and try to recognize the characters, the digits in this case based on the two files that have been generated by the training file which you can see on the left on the fourth and the fifth line that is general samples dot data and general responses dot data which contains multi-valued ar arrays of a separate character and the response that the user gave in response to that character. On running the code, this is what the interface looks like. While running prog underscore train, we get this input file and rectangular boxes come along around the digits one by one and the user has to identify one what digit it is. It starts by a rectangular box in the lower right corner that is 7, then the user inputs 7. The code then goes on to identify all the sevens that are in the image. Then we shift on to the next digit and to the next digit and so on. Then we tend to have all the characters separately and their responses in two data files that we have generated called general responses.data and general samples.data. On running the test file, we see that our system 100% with 100% accuracy identifies all the characters. On the left you can see the output file that our code has generated and on the right you can see the test file that was passed. You can see all these green boxes because all of the digits have been identified correctly. Also making sure that the dot in the first line after 3 has not been identified and does not show up in the output code. As I had previously mentioned, byte spaces and special characters were ignored for this code. So coming on to conclusions. There are several existing systems and methodologies that were analyzed and evaluated theoretically for this project like TensorFlow and Tesseract. Speed and accuracy have often been seen to have a trade-off between themselves and such systems. If the OCR system is quick enough, the accuracy won't be that good. But if the system is accurate enough, the speed would be slow. I have been exploring systems like TensorFlow and Tesseract which are undergoing drastic research. After starting at Hewlett-Packard, Tresseract has now been forwarded on to Google and the Google 
Brain Research Organization also have started with TensorFlow. These are extensive machine learning libraries which work on computer vision algorithms. So these are really improving the accuracy rates and the way we can identify all these things. I have implemented a simple digit recognition system using the OpenCV Python with K nearest neighbors classifier method which has yielded 100% accuracy due to simpler input set that has been considered and ignoring all the white spaces and the special characters. It is important that suggest the suggesting and understanding of future research and improvements on the existing OCR systems to enhance the current research scenarios. For example, the input can be in many languages. Thus, it is important for us to identify all these languages and take into account that English has only 26 characters in an alphabet, whereas other languages might have different and more complex characters to be identified. This is one of the current researches, future researches that is being going on in the field of OCR. I hope you liked my project and my research that I've done in this project. Thank you. These are some of the references that I have used. Thank you.